Why do we see ghosts? ghosts? In November 1921, Dr. William Wilmer received a distressed call from a patient who went by the name of Mrs. H. It had all started a few months before, she said when she and her family had moved into an old country house. The house was cold and dark, lit only by flickering worn out gas lamps and its long corridors echoed with the sounds of creaking doors and squeaking floors. Almost as soon as they had settled in, Mrs. H and her husband felt that they were being watched. Then came the noises, footsteps in empty rooms, the crashing of pots and pans, and distressed, distant wails that rattled through the walls. Her children grew pale and despondent. She and her husband suffered from constant crippling headaches and anxiety and exhaustion. Even her houseplants withered and died. And this was only the beginning. One morning, Mrs. H caught sight of a tall, dark-haired woman dressed all in black looming towards her from the end of the dining room. As she approached, the woman disappeared and she was left alone, staring, trembling at her own ghostly reflection in the mirror. A few days later, she awoke in the middle of the night and saw the woman again, this time with an old man who sat silently at the foot of her bed. When she tried to cry out and wake her husband, she found she could not move. Her whole body had been paralyzed. Now, it would be easy for the skeptics amongst you to dismiss Mrs. H's story as a figment of an overactive imagination or perhaps a case of more severe mental health conditions like schizophrenia. But Mrs. H wasn't the only one who saw these apparitions. Her husband, her children, and even her servants had all been privy to these hauntings too. Mr. H had woken in the middle of the night with the feeling of being strangled and their children had complained of being sat on and poked by a fat old man. As weird as all of this might sound, Mrs. H's experiences are not entirely out of the ordinary. Nearly one in five Americans claim to have seen or been in the presence of a ghost and over a third of Britons believe that houses can be haunted. For some people, seeing ghosts is a way of coping with trauma or grief, just like many amputees who report feeling phantom limbs where their arms or legs used to be. Grieving relatives often report seeing or feeling the presence of their lost loved ones. The fact is, seeing patterns and shapes in random information is actually good for us from an evolutionary perspective. If you're out in the jungle and you see something gleaming in the bushes, it's much better to assume it's the eye of a predator and run, rather than to decide it's probably just a shiny rock or something. This human tendency to see and hear objects and sounds that aren't actually there is called pareidolia. Pareidolia is particularly common when it comes to recognizing faces, whether that's seeing Mother Teresa in a cinnamon bun or the Virgin Mary in a grilled cheese sandwich. Seeing things and patterns that aren't really there is a totally normal human tendency, but for some people, it can become out of control. Madness. Disorder. Psychosis is a condition that affects the way the brain processes information, causing many people to lose touch with reality. Seemingly watching nothing in particular. As a result, patients affected by psychosis often see and believe in things that aren't really there. But let's go back to our story with Mrs. H. She wasn't psychotic, and the physical discomfort that her family were experiencing definitely can't be explained or written off as an extreme case of pareidolia. Is it time we put our hands up in defeat and accepted that their old crumbling house was indeed haunted? Or is there perhaps another explanation? We're walking on top of dead bodies. As a doctor, I'm always looking for answers and that fills me with terror. The night terrors experienced by Mrs. H and her family could be explained by a combination of common sleep disorders. Now, let me ask you, have you ever woken up in the night and been unable to move or speak? If the answer is yes, you're in the 10% of people who have experienced sleep paralysis. I'll go into a paralysis. It's a fully gone man. Your adrenaline is building up. A scary but harmless sleep disorder that happens when wires get crossed in the brain between conscious awareness and REM sleep, the stage of your sleep cycle responsible for dreaming. In other words, your brain wakes up before the rest of you and because you're still in that kind of half sleep stage, you might even see or hear things that aren't there like 
a dark cloaked figure standing in the corner of a room or two silhouettes sitting at the edge of your bed. Now, things can really get scary if paralysis is combined with another common sleep disorder, sleep apnea. If you have obstructive sleep apnea, your throat relaxes to the point where it blocks breathing. And often resulting in a choking or strangling sensation. Okay, so sleep paralysis and sleep apnea might explain the night terrors, but what about the times when Mrs. H's ghost appeared during the day? Well, sometimes paranormal sightings can be a result of your environment rather than just your mind playing tricks on you. In the early 1980s, British engineer Vic Tandy was working late at a night in his lab in Warwickshire. As the night wore on, he began to feel an intense sense of impending doom as if all the life had been sucked out of him, yes, like the Dementors in Harry Potter. Then in his peripheral vision, Tandy caught sight of a grey figure stooping against the white laboratory wall. He swung around to face it, but the figure was gone. As it happened, Tandy's colleagues had warned him about the lab before, but Tandy, skeptic that he was, refused to believe that the building was haunted by something supernatural. There has to be a scientific explanation, he thought, and it turns out he was right. The culprit was the lab's newly installed extractor fan that hummed at a rate of 18.9 hertz. 18.9 hertz, I'll have you know, is just below the range of human hearing, which is 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now that's pretty good going, but there's still a lot of sound that we can't hear. You can see that elephants here have a smaller range of hearing than we do, but their slightly lower frequency range means that they can hear sounds that we can't, like the movement of clouds or the ghostly rumblings of an extractor fan. And then there's all this stuff up here, everything above 20,000. Who knows what's going on here? I mean, maybe ghosts just communicate using extra high frequency squeaks like bats do. Anyway, back to Tandy's lab. We've got this low frequency sound called infrasound, which is wreaking all sorts of havoc in the lab. But how can something that we can't even hear cause so much drama? Well, interestingly, sound at this frequency has been shown to cause feelings of anxiety, dizziness, disorientation, and they often use it in horror movies to add that extra layer of creepiness. And these low frequency sounds don't just make you feel on edge, they can also interfere with the vibrations of your eyeballs. Yep, your eyeballs are constantly vibrating like little spherical jellies. This causes your eyes to see things that aren't actually there. Everything from wind turbines to running fridges can cause these low frequency sound waves and because most of us don't carry audio gauges with us everywhere we go, it's hard to know just how many hauntings are actually caused by a wobbly washing machine or a trembling toaster. But this still doesn't explain the months of dizziness, fatigue, headaches and hallucinations endured by Mrs H and her family. Could anything else be behind it? Let's think about their symptoms for a moment. The family were living at an old, poorly ventilated house lit by gas lamps and powered by a poorly maintained faulty furnace. Something invisible was indeed responsible for the family's affliction, but it wasn't ghosts. It was something much, much more dangerous, carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas that forms when we burn fuels like gas, oil, coal, and wood. It's so dangerous that this gas kills hundreds of people every year. It and other chemicals have been established as a factor in damage to vegetation. You see, carbon monoxide binds to the hemoglobin in your blood much more strongly than oxygen, and it takes up more and more binding space in your red blood cells so that eventually your body becomes oxygen starved. The fatigue dizziness and hallucinations reported by Mrs H set in when the oxygen deprivation reached her brain and her family are lucky they got out when they did and any longer in that house and the insidious gas would have killed them quicker than any supernatural could. It looks like we can say case closed for the mysterious haunting of Mrs H, but this is just one example. And while science has managed to solve a small selection of supernatural sightings, there are still many, many paranormal puzzles left unsolved. Our assumption that we have a complete visual understanding of the world around us, for example, is totally false and only 0.0035% of reality is even visible to us. 
Things like ultraviolet, infrared, x-rays, gamma rays, they're totally invisible to the human eye. So who knows? Maybe there could be ghosts out there after all. Maybe the supernatural is simply a science we haven't managed to explain yet. Have you ever seen a ghost? If you have, drop me a line in the comments below and don't forget to like, subscribe and share, otherwise you might be haunted as well.